Hello, everyone. I hope that you can see me. <laughs> I am excited to be here today to talk about how to beat chronic skin rashes edition. This is our um, Ask Me Anything based off of the conversation that was started on Tuesday night when I hosted uh, a one time only masterclass for my community. And was so, so amazed that we had over 700 people registered for that event. So if this is something that, that you're looking for, we are really looking forward to help in order to, in 2024, start identifying the actual underlying root causes of your skin issues and then dealing with them. How do we deal with them? How do we learn the appropriate steps and the order of the steps in order to make that happen? So first and foremost, I just wanna remind you if you're here listening to this and you haven't done so, please make sure to subscribe to my community. That way, as we do more Ask Me Anythings, and I promise there's another one scheduled for next week, that you will always be notified. Plus, we have a ton of amazing content releasing every single day. So I'd love to make sure that you get access to it. And that way too, you can also leave your questions and comments under videos and I'm able, and my team is able to help you connect with the other resources that you need on your skin rash healing journey. So in regards to today's Ask Me Anything, I have been given a ton of questions from my community about my Skin Rash Rebuild program. It's my signature eight week program. And you're like, wait, I don't know what this is. It's basically a process that I created from, with working with clients since 2017 who have chronic skin issues and who are looking for that root cause approach with the appropriate information and knowledge base and research around chronic skin conditions. Because it's great to say, oh, I want to go the functional or integrative or alternative route to deal with my health and my skin. The problem is that there are no, believe it or not, there are no educational training programs for this that exist. So there's no functional medicine training programs. There are no um, integrative training programs. A lot of times people are taking this cookie cutter template of how they deal with autoimmune conditions and they're applying it or gut problems and they're applying it to chronic skin issues. And skin does not act the same way as other conditions, unfortunately. And it especially does not act the same way as chronic gut problems. So I wanted to share with you guys one of my slides just to underscore what's happening and to clarify to you why it's so important to understand the inflammatory process that is happening when you have chronic skin issues, because it is different. It's a different kind of situation. So I'm gonna share my screen for a moment so that you can see what's going on here. So I put together this slide deck because I thought that it might be extremely helpful for people to see this. And so as I start to describe what what is driving in these skin issues? And so when I talk about skin issues, I'm talking about eczema or atopic dermatitis, psoriasis, rosacea, dandruff, chronic hives, urticaria, dermatographia. We're looking at dandruff, seborrheic dermatitis, perioral dermatitis, even to some degree topical steroid withdrawal. However, that also, usually you had something, not always, but usually you had some sort of skin issue to begin with. And then the TSW piece is a secondary problem on top of whatever was already there in the first place that prompted you, unfortunately, to go to the doctor, they prescribe steroids, and here we are, unfortunately. So what I want to share with you around inflammation is that we get so fixated on the outside, right? So if you look at the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see what you see, right? This, you know, and think about yourself. You're focused on the flaky dry skin. Maybe you have thin or weak skin in different areas, depending on where your skin is inflamed. You may have horrible itch that comes and goes, or maybe it's there all the time, cuts, wounds. You may have hyper or hypopigmentation depending on your skin tone, what it, sh what it normally is, because skin inflammation looks different in different skin tones. So in some individuals, their skin's gonna look pink and red. Others individuals, it's gonna look purple or gray even, or just really super hyperpigmented and darker than what it normally would look like. You could also have pain, um, hives, skin plaques. So especially skin plaques can be 
are probably more predominant in things like psoriasis. But this outside skin picture is what we see. And we get so focused around this because we're looking for the things that we can apply topically that will impact these specific symptoms. That's what we're oriented around. And likely what you've been told by your doctor is that your skin is just an outside problem, right? We're always being given creams and medications to quell those symptoms so that they don't continue bothering you. And sometimes you're told, well, you must just be allergic to something Um, or you just got bad genes. And then like as you get more frustrated, sometimes people will start to go, you know, gee, uh, maybe my diet plays a role. You know, you read something online and so it starts to orient you towards the dietary component and you begin to maybe think or someone may tell you that maybe you're just reacting to all of these quote unquote inflammatory foods. And while this is all nice, it does not help us understand the underlying inflammatory piece of chronic skin conditions. It in fact completely ignores it. And so while you are, you are and have been very, very focused on what you can see, what you can apply, it ignores, and it's because you probably don't know this, it ignores what you don't see under the surface. And that are things like the inflammatory fires that start someplace else and eventually that inflammation impacts the skin. And we start to see that dysfunction in other ways where you can recognize that there's an internal problem, but we don't necessarily associate it with the skin itself. And so we begin to see this inflammation as like neuroinflammation, digestive dysfunction, sex hormone imbalances, poor cell energy production or poor mitochondrial uh, production. Um, we could certainly have genetic issues and SNPs and, and probably most notably that would impact something to the effect like filaggrin production, which for those of you who have eczema, a lot of times you might be familiar with filaggrin because it's almost like the mortar mix between the bricks or the cells of the skin to help keep the skin nice and tight. Um, the filaggrin production will drop and become of lesser quality because of inflammation. It actually causes a dysregulation of the enzyme that produces filaggrin. And some individuals, they may just have a genetic SNP that causes poor filaggrin production. So you might say, well, maybe I need to know if I have the genetic SNP. But the reality of it is, if if we know inflammation impacts the ability of the enzymes that your body makes to produce filaggrin, we can't just blame it all on that because there's so many other things, right? We could also have poor cell turnover, allergic reactions, nutrient deficiencies, gut microbiome dysbiosis or imbalances. So of that gut microbiome community, liver detox overload, where our three phases of liver detox are very unbalanced, usually focusing predominantly on phase two being completely out of whack and not having the tools that it needs to do what it needs to do. And then thyroid dysfunction. Now there's a whole litany of other concerns here. However, I just want to share these with you because I think at least the idea, if you look at this particular what you don't see graphic, is that while we're so fixated on finding the thing that's going to fix the outside, we miss and are not oriented toward what's happening under the surface that is equally important especially when we start to recognize that the symptoms that you have whether they are on the skin whether they are in other body symptoms are really clues they're not yes they're annoying yes they can be painful yes they can keep you from sleeping and all of these things that you don't like but fundamentally The symptoms are clues, and that is really, really crucial when we begin to understand that these symptoms are not just a matter of um, annoyances to make your life what is what for some you may feel is a living hell. They are clues that something is going on under the surface. And so it's really important for us to understand the difference when it comes to inflammation. Like, what is it? And what's the difference between chronic and acute inflammation? Because they're vastly different. And so 
with inflammation, a lot of these skin conditions, and this is my contention, is many of them are predominantly driven by inflammation. And a lot of the, the pharmaceutical research, I, and like love big pharma, hate big pharma, that's fine. Whatever opinion you have is what you have. But I do think that there could be benefits to us looking at the research that they have done on some of the newer medications. And that helps us, helps inform us as, of, of the importance of inflammation in this entire process. So inflammation isn't just some random thing, right? A lot of times they're like, oh, it's an internal fire. It's this like silent fire. But you don't really know what that means unless maybe you've had direct experience with an acute inflammatory response due to breaking a bone. Um, or being in a car accident where something traumatic has happened to your body and your body immediately has to react for its survival and to try to maintain homeostasis. Chronic inflammation is different. It's where there is this sustained, longer-term reaction happening under the surface, where we eventually start to see an elevation of these immune system messengers. And the easiest way, the, the term to actually call them, are cytokines. These chemical messengers are neither good nor bad. They're really there to help your immune system communicate with itself. So whether there's something that happens in one area, those cells are sending out system, system messages to your other immune systems in other parts of the body saying, hey, we need you to come here. It's sort of like if you had an intruder or something happening at your house and you needed to get the police and the fire um, firefighters and whatever to your house, you're going to send out messages, right? You're going to make phone calls out to an exterior source to try to recruit help into that area. The problem is that when we have this uncontrollable, <laughs> unstopped release of cries for help internally from a problem, that's where we start to experience sustained tissue damage. We can start to have skin rashes. You can experience like in psoriatic arthritis where your joints may swell up and have joint damage. We can start to have issues with our thyroid. All sorts of systems can go kind of haywire because of this huge response. So again, it's not great, but you have to understand the intention behind it to not go, oh my gosh, we just need to stop and shut off these messengers. I think the more important question is why we are having this profuse amount of chemical messengers, of signals being sent to your immune system to try to get help. Now, you might say, well, that seems really cute, Jen. That's a cute idea, right? Because you're saying if I have something going on in one area of the body, then it could potentially impact other systems, correct. But it also means that the rashes you have on the outside are not the origination point of the reaction. Okay, so think about that. If That means that if the cytokines or these chemical messengers make their way out from, let's just say as an example, the GI tract or the gut, they can end up on the skin and trigger rashes as one of the symptoms that there is a problem internally. So that's why when you apply creams, you're really band-aiding the inner problem. And so again, I don't, I want to just be careful here because I feel like there's a lot of, like on, on this platform, it can be really sexy and glorious to just be like, oh, it's all a gut problem. Oh, it's all this. Everyone wants the one thing to be wrong or they want everything to be blamed on this one problem. And that's not the case. This is a complex, nuanced conversation because there's a lot going on. But these cytokines are an integral part to understanding what's happening in this whole space of chronic skin conditions. Um, let me just show you a couple of other things here that I have in my slide deck. Um, like I was saying, if we look at certain medications like Dupilumab, which is Dupixent, you can see the medication that helps some individuals completely turn off their skin symptoms impacts 
and blocks IL-4 and IL-13. Those are two different types of cytokines. We also have JAK inhibitors, which are a, basically when you use JAK inhibitors, they're shutting down the JAK stat pathway that leads to a larger shutdown of more cytokines at the same time. So it's sort of like if you had a problem with a outlet in your house, right? An electrical outlet, you don't know which one it is. There's a huge problem. You're really nervous that a fire could start. You go and you just turn off the power to your house or you shut down one of the major breakers, right? It shuts down multiple outlets, multiple switches in the house, but you only had to hit one button. That's essentially how a jack inhibitor works. It's more systemic and less targeted, whereas like Dupixent, for example, impacts IL-4 and IL-13 alone. Adbri impacts IL-13 alone, right? We can look at some other different target targeted um, medications. For psoriasis, for example, we know that certain cytokines that they like to go after are IL-17, IL-23, and tumor necrosis factor alpha. Even like with new medications that are being approved for hydrogenitis saporativa, again, those medications are targeting IL-17 and tumor necrosis factor alpha. So the question is, if these medications work, which they, yeah, okay, they don't work for everybody, but they're so effective for some, we have to ask the question, what's going on to drive these things up? And just to share a little bit with you, um, I think it's helpful to see this. these are the cytokines that different medications actually impact. And love the medications, hate the medications, however you feel about medicine is neither here nor there. I'm just sharing this with you because I do think it's helpful for you to understand that these medications are doing something to the immune system, to that cytokine response, they help put a lid on a pot that is boiling over. And many of them specifically are putting a lid on certain cytokines. They're helping to block or drop the number of cytokines that are present, right? So it's sort of like if you had to make 15 phone calls, which I mean, sure, we could say it's very inefficient to have to call the police station 15 times, but now they're limiting the number of times you could call the police station for help. We're only allowed maybe one call, two calls, right? And so essentially that's what's happening. We're shutting things down. We are putting a lid on this crazy response. And so I just wanted to share with you, like here's one example, H. pylori. I shared this in my presentation the other night. H. pylori increases IL-6, IL-8, IL-17, IL-23, tumor ne necrosis factor alpha. I'm sure there may be others. These, this is what I could find research on and I've actually presented this at uh, professional um, trainings with other um, medical practitioners and whatnot. And we can see that those who have H. pylori, research confirms that those who are H. pylori positive, and this is an infection that impacts the stomach, it impacts about 50 to 60% of the world's population, um, that actually increases IL-17 and IL-23 quite significantly, and the heat shock proteins associated with H. pylori also increase IL-6 production, right? So it drives it up. So, okay, that's great. We have this bacteria that causes this increase of these messengers to be released into the system. And I think this is the most important thing. If you start to, if you think about what condition you have, what you're struggling with, and you start to look at the cytokines, and this is not co complete. I, number one, I wanna, really wanna say that there are other cytokines that are also associated with these different conditions. There's a lot of new research on IL-31 and all these different interleukins and all sorts of stuff that's going on now in labs all over the world. But these are ones that, we can cite. And when you look at these, you can see an interesting overlap. Now, am I suggesting that all of these conditions have H. pylori? No, I am not. This is just one example of what may be um, an introduction to you to think about something else, some place else in the body that could potentially be responsible for the reactions that you're having, especially if you've tried doing all of the elimination diets, you've tried doing all of the vitamins and the supplements you've read about online, 
you've tried all the creams, you've tried all of the different medications that you feel comfortable taking. And you're like, I don't understand. I also don't get why it seems to be getting worse. I go off the medication, things come back, they're even worse. This is part of the reason why is that we're looking in the wrong place. And I want to help you figure out how to look in the correct place for what could be driving these things up. Now, H. pylori as a bacterial infection could be one option. It's not the only thing. There are other things that can drive up inflammation. And just to like kind of hammer this home a little bit, you know, we have a lot of different organisms, just as an example. And again, I want to be very clear. This is not, I'm not saying that skin issues are just a gut issue because there's many different balls in the air, but it is really crucial to recognize that when there is undergrowth of gut commensal, the healthy kind of gut bugs or gut bacteria, that can cause issues. Too much fungal organisms and or candida can cause issues. So for example, candida will actually drive up IL-17. It's one of the reasons that IL-17 inhibitors, those medications, actually have a risk of candidiasis, which is an actual infection of candida. So again, we're looking for what are the out of balance organisms? What is going on with the liver that it cannot handle what may be happening in other parts of the body that imbalance between phase one and phase two, Um, specifically sometimes phase three as well. So I just want to share this because I do think that some of this is really, really crucial for you to start taking other cues from other things. This was one slide from my presentation. Um, I got a few questions about, you know, I just don't fully understand. You're saying my liver's involved, but it's I, I'm a little confused about that. And so I get that if you go online, you literally will find tons of information about do a liver cleanse, drink these liver detox teas, do castor oil packs, how about a coffee enema? That will help you detox your liver. And you can you can see here that there are, as I said, three phases of liver detox. Phase one is predominantly the goal is to make toxins water soluble. That is its primary focus. Phase two is really to transform them so that they can be um excuse me, phase one is really to get things prepared for phase two. Uh, Phase two is highly nutrient dependent, makes things water soluble, so then we can excrete them, right? Because the whole point is that the lipid soluble nutrients have to go through, or toxins, hormones, etc. They're lipid soluble, they are not water soluble, so it's difficult for us to excrete them. So the whole point of phase two liver detox, which runs predominantly on amino acids, And you can see the little yellow box down there with the different uh, pathways, including glutathione conjugation, methylation, transsulfuration, glucuronidation, sulfation, acetylation, and amino acid conjugation. They get everything prepared for phase three, which is really excretion through various pathways. And so when we don't have enough of those those nutrients in order to repackage things into water-soluble format, stuff just sits. It just hangs out. It can't go through phase two because it's rate limited. So it's based on how much of these nutrients do you have available. And unfortunately, cleanses, teas, castor oil packs, and coffee enemas do not add those nutrients into the system to support phase one. Oftentimes, they are focused around phase three, getting things moving, helping you move out of a state of constipation or upregulating and increasing the speed of phase one, which now you can see is a problem if you don't have the nutrients to move things through phase two, because everything that goes through phase one must go through phase two. Now we have an issue. And so I think that's one reason why I really, really want to make sure that as you move into the new year, you are A, looking in the right place for these underlying problems, but B, you're also able to take those foundational steps, one of which is supporting that phase two liver detox with the appropriate nutrients that you need in order to get things moving, righting gut function, 
and then addressing some of the other foundational pieces to things that really, really are important. Um, so I just, I'll share this little graphic and then um, I'll answer a couple questions and we'll wrap up. But basically, we really want to start at the bottom of this pyramid, right? I created this because I find that most people like to start someplace else. They think the issue that they need to begin dealing with, for example, is their sex hormones. But you can see that it's at the top of the pyramid. And it is a higher level issue that can be drastically impacted by improving things on the more foundational level. So liver detoxification is one of the first things that I really like to work on. Sleep, stress, if there's trauma, that is also equally important. Energy issues, um, blood sugar regulation, thyroid regulation, adrenal gland support, but also gut function. I would put gut function, believe it or not, almost on par with liver detoxification. Those are usually the first two things that I discuss with every single client and that we discuss in the Skin Rush Rebuild program. And then we start diving into the gut microbiome, but you can't start addressing and manipulating the gut microbiome until you address liver detoxification. That is super important because every waste product produced by organisms in your gut microbiome has to be processed through your liver. You don't just pee or poop it out. It has to go through your phase two liver detox. That is really, really crucial. And so if you're now killing things, as people like to do with gut protocols, it's a real challenge because you've got a lot more of a load headed toward the liver that really needs the support. So then you try and do these protocols, you start to react, your skin flares up, you feel miserable, and this is one of the reasons why. So this is a really great like 2000 foot view of how the steps in which I have found that you address chronic skin issues really needs to take place. Yes, there's some nuance to it all, but generally speaking, this is the best way to go. So as I was saying, the Skin Rash Rebuild program, we've had over 700 people go through it. We've had skin conditions across the board have been eczema, psoriasis, rosacea, dandruff, chronic hives, dermatographia or urticaria. Um, we've also had people who've had TSW or topical steroid withdrawal, perioral dermatitis, tinea versicolor, um, and even some individuals who honestly were told that they don't know what they have or had just like quote unquote dermatitis. So it's a great program for you if you have been struggling. You can be working with another practitioner, especially if they don't specifically deal with chronic skin issues and they're not entirely sure um, what a more customized approach is specifically for skin. So you can take back a lot of this information to your practitioner, ask smarter questions. We also help you identify and coach you. I'm really big on coaching people on how to talk to your practitioner or your doctor about chronic skin problems, especially if we suspect that you have a skin infection. I think that is really crucially important to know if you have a skin infection and how to ask for medication, how to ask for the right tests, what blood tests can you ask? What stool tests can you ask for? All sorts of things. And so we look at this whole process in a very comprehensive way. That way you're able to customize this approach. You get to get on calls with me twice a week for eight weeks and we go through this entire framework. There are, I believe, I think it's 17 assessments. Let's see here, I've got it written down. Yeah, we've got 17 different types of assessments for people to go through. So you get access to these and they're shared with you in the format of, so that you're not just like handed all of these at once. We tell you where to start, what to go through, what do the results mean, what other testing would be helpful to do. Um, these obviously can't replace um, regular labs, but they can give you a good idea of where to go, what to talk to your doctor about, what you should consider. And then we also include protocols. We have 22 different protocols that we can coach you around and help you understand the best way to use them or to talk to your practitioner about integrating these in. And so we've got a whole lot of stuff 
um, available to you through this program. And I've been asked, um, I was asked a bunch of questions about the, the skin rash rebuild because I get that it's very different. It's dealing with a lot of different chronic skin problems. And it just seems like when you go online, you think like the solutions for say chronic hives are gonna look much different compared to someone with psoriasis or someone with eczema. And by the way, eczema is not necessarily a histamine problem. Not every case is. And so we wanna figure out how do we take these steps? There's some similarities. And then we also show you where the conditions diverge so that if you have, say, psoriasis, you're gonna go down this route. And if you have chronic hives, you're gonna go down this route and direct you through the process to help you figure out what tests to get, what nutrients you need to look out for, um, what lifestyle changes are most helpful, what topical solutions we recommend in my clinic for these particular situations. Um, again, coaching you around how to talk to your doctor. We do talk a little bit about diet, but I'll be honest with you, I find that people lean way too hard on dietary measures. It can be a band-aid and a bridge to getting some relief, but we also need to be really mindful of those who have a history of eating disorder or if you currently are afraid of food because you've eliminated so much and you're really not sure how to add it back in so I like to look at all of the other facets that we can lean into as opposed to just harping on take this out of your diet this is inflammatory this is toxic and making you feel like you're constantly at war with food so um, one of the things I do want to share is the enrollment period is currently open. You can go to skinrashreset.com and you can sign up there. I'll also have the link in the description below this video if you are watching the replay. Uh, our registration window closes on Sunday, January 14th at 11.59 p.m. Pacific time. And we're pretty firm about that. So if this is something that you wanna do and we're not reopening this program for another about nine months, if you wanna get started, this is a really great opportunity to be supported. There's no judgment in this community. It's okay if you're already on medications or you're considering going the medication route but you still want to work on those underlying integrative approaches we can do those together and my associate and I are very well versed on what herbs what nutrients etc are impacted by different medications that are commonly used for chronic skin problems as well as what you can do and what you can't do because there are some medications like immunosuppressants are one class where you have to be really careful what herbs you use and some of them will deplete specific nutrients that you need to get tested and you need to supplement with at a, a much higher dose than what you're going to find in like a regular multivitamin so we're providing you with the guidance that you need that you're probably not getting um, especially if you've been expecting some sort of integrative approach from like a dermatologist that they just don't really have that type of training and i get it it can be really frustrating you you wish right that you were able to like go to one person and get all of the answers but unfortunately it's just not always the case right and so um, you know, I got one question from um, one person who said like they started to have issues with rosacea that started uh, this past fall and they never had any skin issues prior to this. They started to have all sorts of yeast problems um, and were told by their doctor that there's no cure for this, that basically they just have to live it with it for the rest of their life and deal with um, taking medications to just keep the infections at bay. They come back, come and go, come and go, now have rosacea, have lots of fungus on the toes, sleep is the worst, waking up every hour. And wondering, like, is this really just all liver related? You know, is it possible that there is a connection between the fungal piece and the liver piece? And so I hope that what you saw in the slides is that, yes, there's usually some sort of liver detox overload problem where we really need to ramp up specific nutrients. And I talk a lot about that on the Healthy Skin Show, specifically about glycine, uh, vitamin B6. Um, and there's other nutrients involved in this as well that are really important. But 
also that interaction between the gut microbiomes. It sounds like there's a fungal problem, but what else could potentially be also going on? Because it's never just one thing. I wish it was for some people. They're like, oh, I found out that I have an allergy to dogs. I'm just, I just don't go over to my friend's house anymore that has a dog and I'm fine. Well, that's nice. Or you found out that you were allergic to something in your laundry detergent. You stopped using that with the chemical in it and now you're fine. That's great. But that's not the person that is struggling and who has done so many things or all the things to try to get the rashes to stop. And so we're really taking a look under the hood to get that 2000 foot view and then put a plan together that helps you integrate both the conventional side and the integrative side. That does not shame you if medication is part of your journey, because I think for some individuals, they need something to help give them more runway, um, but also to say, well, you know, this whole process not only impacts my skin, right? But it also can impact other areas like my thyroid, my energy level, what and brain fog, my gut, everything. And so my goal always with clients is not just to focus on the skin. I want to see an overall health improvement. And so to, over the course of eight weeks, we go through a ton of information. Um, you are supported completely. You get your questions answered. Yes, you can submit questions if you can't make the live calls. So there's two live calls a week, one on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And then one generally on Thursdays, though we have a couple of uh, variations to that this live round, but all of those dates are inside and that's usually, that's inside the program. So you'll be able to schedule it into your calendar, but usually they're around 10 a.m. Eastern time. And we do those specifically at two different time frames because we have folks all over the world joining us. So a lot of times people from Europe can make a Thursday call, whereas folks on the West Coast love the Tuesday night call. So it really makes it easy for you to join whatever you can. And if you can't make it live, everything is recorded. We do full transcripts for the Tuesday night calls. Um, and I also have my associate helping to answer questions in the chat. If you can't make a call and you have questions, you can submit them through our Q&A box for that particular week's calls. And we answer every question. It is really important to me that we do that so that you get the guidance to know exactly what you need to do. Um, and so we invite guests in. One guest uh, is going to be somebody who's a skincare expert who comes in and it, during one of our Q&A calls will answer all of your topical skincare questions. Um, and then I'll also review different types of stool tests and show you, especially for that, at least the component that's associated with the gut, how we start to deconstruct the way we look at stool testing from that through the skin lens because the way that i look at a stool test as a clinical nutritionist for somebody who just has gut problems is very different from how i look at it with somebody who has eczema or psoriasis or hives or something like that where it pertains to the skin it's very different and a lot of times the things that we would ignore and not necessarily care as much about when there's a gut problem may actually be a lot more important to your particular problem with that's going on with your skin and in other ways systemically. So I wanna show you how through different types of tests to see those types of patterns. And then of course we have the assessments and all sorts of things. So it's really truly a very supportive program. And if you get to the end of the eight weeks, which many people are working their way through, they really love coming to the class, um, we then have a more advanced inner circle community that you can join afterwards if you so choose, where there's more calls, there's more education and whatnot, um, but you have to go through the Skin Rash Rebuild first. So if, if you're curious about the details, you wanna check out what's involved in this program, what my philosophy is, why I'm so passionate about this, I encourage you to head to skinrashreset.com and you'll be able to check everything out there. There's also, Right now, the replay is still available. I know we're getting toward the end of its availability, but you can 
if it's still there, it'll be at the top of the page. You can watch that if you'd like to see the whole presentation and all of the information, all of the questions you have are on that page as well as the ability to sign up and join us. And as I said, we shut those doors down, unfortunately, for enrollment on Sunday, this coming Sunday evening, January 14th. Uh, 2024 at 11 59 p.m pacific time and then we kick everything off this coming tuesday uh, january 16th at 7 p.m eastern um, with our first live call there's a lot to learn there's a lot to go through i've been teaching this for the last four years aside from having private clients that we are constantly learning and educating and creating new approaches to help support them regardless of what type of skin issue they have. So if you have any other questions about the program, please leave them in the chat. I will be checking in over the next few days to see if I can get you answers to the questions. Otherwise, you can also connect with my support team at support at jenniferfuga.com. Again, I will put any links and such into the description below this replay. So that way it's easier for you to find things. And um, let us know if there's anything holding you back, we're happy to um, help, but you can join no matter where you live in the world, by the way. It's not specific just to the US. We have people that join from all over the place. So anyway, I thank you guys so much. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I look forward if you're ready to join the program. I'm excited to uh, be by your side, supporting you as your co-pilot on your journey to make 2024 a much better 